Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Hello, we're back. This time we're going to dive into part 10, creep assessment. In this, this uh, video, we're going to go into section 10.1. And of course, this is the 2016 edition of uh, API 579. Then we're going to go into 10.2.1, suitability for service. Then into 10.22, assessment applicability. And then we'll go into 10.3, data requirements. Now we're going to go back to part two. We had a, a video about that before. Remember, recall that part two is the roadmap for API 579. And we're going to go back and review that briefly to see where we are. So where would we apply creep assessment? Uh, there, there are two locations where we would do that for fire damage and for creep damage. Those are the, the damage classes. They can be found here. And if you look down on that list at the bottom, it's, it's shown as one of the many mechanisms that can, uh, uh, failure me mechanisms that can occur as a result of fire damage. Also, just straight creep damage from you know, use uh, in, in high temperature environments. And there we go. So what are the conditions which make a part 10 creep assessment suitable? What are the conditions that may that warrant a fitness for service evaluation? 10.21 provides a, a detailed uh, a summary of those things. And basically, the first part is operating in pressure upsets. So is this a design that is outside the original design? Like, is there an event that wasn't considered? Then that may, this may be suitable excessive metal loss that would be beyond the design of the component uh, metal loss in this category would include component stresses above the originally considered original original design as well weldments weldments uh, these are kind of component welds that have significantly different properties in the the, the weld metal the heat affected zone called a has and the base metals and you get this with certain low alloy uh, heat resistant type steels uh, an example would be one one and a quarter chrome half molly two and a quarter chrome one molly and then your your higher level chromiums with with vanadium in it Ten point two one continues its its discussion about suitability. They continue with stress concentrations. They say that stress concentration regions in components that are not accounted for in the original design. So uh, they're not accounted for in the original design. So so examples would be out of roundness or peaking of longitudinal seam welds notch like locations such as transition regions with a slope of greater than one to three and bulges that have occurred in service fire damage uh, this can be res the result of short-term heating event the third one is crack uh, crack flaw discovery uh, both initial fabrication and in service induced crack flaws should be evaluated. Um, there are cases when 
um, they, it may be picked up, you know, later, and it may be a result of, you know, before or after. Maybe cracks that have started but have not propagated, for example. Uh, the, the third one is other fabrication and, and service flaws. So that could be, uh, you know, pitting damage, weld misalignment, out of roundness, bulges, dents, something that they accepted it and, and it's resulted in, in a worse condition. Dent gouges, a combination with localized creep strain, accumulation and the subsequent cracking. Uh, both initial fabrication and service induced flaws should be evaluated. In section 10.22, there's a discussion, more discussions about assessment applicability. And we're going to go back to the level, screening levels once again that are talked about or discussed in sections uh, or part one and part two. And recall that we have three levels of progressive um, screening. You have level one shown here, which is a, sort of a screening level, and it's the most conservative one. It gives the indication of about, um, you know, where, where uh, roughly we are. Level two is a mid-range uh, engineer level of assessment, and level three is the most detailed assessment, and that would be done by a specialist. So, Chapter or part 10, creep assessment, deals with all three of these, um, these levels. Okay, so let's dive into the level one assessment. We, we mentioned that it's an inspector level inspection. It, this is discussed in great detail in parts one and in and, and a bit in part two. So basically, Level one should not be done if, if it hasn't been designed or it's been custom designed uh, and designed, not designed to a recognized standard. So if it's designed to API or ASME um, or, or, or international rec recognized standards, then this level assessment is applicable. Secondly, if there, there shouldn't be any you know, fire damage or overheating events because they, 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 they're saying level one isn't applicable. So uh, what they say is if there's any components that are subject to fire damage or overheating event that resulted in significant change in the shape. So if there's a lot of sagging or bul bulging result of a fire or excessive metal loss from scaling, then uh, you, level one isn't sufficient to do a proper check. The other two acceptability criterion that must be adhered to is minimum hardness. There is a hardness uh, a table based on a different types of materials. It's called table 10.1 and it indicates the minimum hardness content uh, and uh, carbon content and that's shown in those tables. And my preference is to have the parent metal and the weld metals checked and the heat effect zone if possible. There should be no flaws. The component shouldn't contain flaws. So um, if there's an LTA or a groove-like flaw, pitting damage, blistering, um, HIC heat, you know, uh, HIC, Corrosion, uh, so hick damage, weld misalignment out of roundness or bulge that exceed the original design code tolerances, a dent or a dent gouge combination, a crack like flaw, a microstructural abnormality such as graphitization, sigma phase transformation, which you get with, with uh, high alloy steels, carb carburization or hydrogen attack then they're saying that that's, uh, you shouldn't be using level one assessment. 
Now, a level two assessment ap applicability, let's get into those details and spend a t little bit of time on that. Level one is not applicable, um, not applicable or level one does not pass. That's a criterion for, um, for doing it, for doing a level two. The original design, as we mentioned before, it's still got to be designed by a, a recognized standard. And um, there needs to be an operating history and documented future plans, uh, especially for registration with, with, you know, with the government for it, for that, if you're doing those evaluations. Uh, there has to be less than uh, uh, 50, the component has been subject to less than or equal to 50 cycles of operations, including startup shutdown conditions, or less than a specified original design. I've rarely seen um, that calculated into the design, but that's the standard, less than 50 cycles, then you can do a level two. The third one is there's no flaw. So that's um, the same criterion as we discussed in, in uh, the level one assessment criteria, which is in the previous um, slide. Now, a level three assessment. Let's talk about that. So again, it's like the pyramid. Level two doesn't pass and three is not applicable or doesn't or, or Our final stop before we actually do a calculation is called data requirements. And if, and if you recall from the earlier videos, we, this has been re reviewed quite a bit in detail because it's really important. And, and uh, sometimes I, I've dealt with clients where they, um, they don't see the importance or they get frustrated with the lack of um, you know, all your questions and the spectrum of data. And so this is a referring to this section is very important so that you can get your point across about you know why it's required you know because the standard requires that level. So we're going to dive into uh, level one dot requirements, which is referenced in 10.3. So and and more specifically, I'm, I'm going to there's other sections, but this 10.33 is very important and it's very specific to to keep. Uh, uh, on operational history. The first one is called, we need to, the key thing is we need an accurate operational experience uh, for this design. So this is where, you know, some jurisdictions, they require good, they, they require um, records for for this so that a fitness for service is uh, evaluation is deemed acceptable. So um, I have a few thoughts about that. Component operating history and future operational conditions are required to perform a remaining life assessment. This information should include an accurate description of operating temperatures, pressures, supplemental load, special load cases, and corresponding time period with significant effects. This could be special supplemental loads could be like charging, for example, uh, a load. These events include startups, normal operation, upset conditions and, and shutdowns and also, you know, like cycling events, right? Uh, past operating experience may, uh, um, past operating history may not be required if you refer to a paragraph called 10.352. So have a read through that one. So uh, if, it, if you can't obtain, uh, like a hist histogram is, is, a big, is a pretty big deal for, for doing. If you can't obtain, be generated, then, then it's encouraged to develop an approximate histogram to state your uh, the assumptions based upon information by, by the operator. 
and the information shall include you know all assumptions uh, and the decision and then it's encouraged that you do a sensitivity analysis to determine how how sensitive these variables are so that you can make you know a really sound assessment and that's important also if uh, for the uh, you know for the local authority to to see how well you've you've considered these issues so you know that's what i meant by the sensitivity analysis so um, you know, if past conditions aren't known, then you got to basically go ahead and, um, you know, estimate, you know, try to determine the uncertainty. So material tests can be performed, um, you know, the creep range. There's some strategy shown in the document um, and so on. So, so you know, a histogram is, is a key to doing the analysis. So when we do an example, we will, we will use that, um, that philosophy. So let's quickly dive into levels two and three. We've discussed before about 10.32, original equipment design data, and 10.33, maintenance and operating history. The, 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 the remaining points that need to be uh, added to that, I've, and I've bolded them, is 10.34, loads and stresses, material properties, and damage characterization. So we're going to stop here and the next slide we're going to st or the next presentation we're going to we're going to do some examples. I, I really felt it was important to to um, go through these details and a lot of details so that um, you know as engineers we can be rushed and, and to really clearly understand um, the the issues and the data and and that so that we can do a good you know, sound assessment. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.